Hey guys, what's happening? So, back on the Bronco again, man. So this time my uh, passenger side rear tire locked up. So yeah, it was crazy. I, I could turn, I, I could smell stuff. The car felt like it was fading. Even the brakes were fading. A little sketchy. Um, yeah, this time it's actually even worse than it was before. Like this thing is totally locked up. And I went out with my uh, my tool. Oh, it's over there somewhere, but it's um, my uh, like my thermal gauge, right? And uh, so it was typically it was like eighty something on that side, but it was like four hundred degrees. The whole rim was four hundred degrees. So I can't even move the, the thing right now. Take a look at this. I can't even move the tire back and forth. It's it is totally locked up. Man. 100% locked up. But take a look at this. The tire got so hot that all these little things are popping out and the cover came off. The center cap came off. Like it melted the plastic. So I don't know how much damage is down here. But if I can even recover the caliper, you know, take it apart and rebuild it. But yeah, you see the center cap? That whole thing just melted off. That's how hot it was. But yeah, actually, yesterday it started groaning them aloud, you know, and yeah, it was a, it was, I could smell it, but it had been happening for like, a, you know, for a week. So it seems like it would, what would happen is it would, I could smell it would kind of come and go. So it was kind of intermittently locking up, I think. And I was like looking down, I didn't see leaks. And then finally, like I said, I, I, I kind of tra tracked it down with my, my thermal gauge and decided just to check the brakes. And yeah, the smell was just the, was coming from the back of that, that hose fitting right there. And I could see it bubbling, you know, and smoking off, off the hose fitting. So um, those calipers are probably about 90 bucks each at O'Reilly. 57 is the cheapest I can see them on Amazon, but if it's not totally jacked up, I can, I mean, I've made other videos about rebuilding calipers. So typically it's gotta take the caliper apart, clean it out, that's usually, or get like a cheap little four or $5 seal kit. But if there's no major damage internally, I can probably just rebuild it. Sometimes you don't have to even redo the seals either. It's just, it gets, debris gets caught in there, you know? Rusty debris, they, these are, I mean, I probably put these in like, uh, I did the conversion probably over 10 years ago. I made a video about it. But this is like, it's probably one of the best upgrades I've ever done on this thing. Because before that, this thing was foil drum brakes with a single, single master cylinder. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, this is a 1966 Bronco. Um, yes, yeah, so I had to take the tire off. Yeah, I can't even drive in this state. So, yeah, totally locked up. That's the worst I've ever seen it before. So, um, all right, let me take the tire off. We'll take a look at it. All right, take a look at this. This is horrible. Um, yeah, it even actually worn in my, um, I might just put this on my lathe and see if I can clean it up with my lathe. Take some of these raiders off. Just a little bit. Um. Yeah, this pad is actually okay, but that one is totally jacked up. So one of these pins are straight. All right, so all of a sudden I need to have new brake pads here. But yeah, it's so locked up I can't even move it. So how am I gonna free that up? Um, all right, so this thing's crazy locked in place. I got the bolts off, but I'm wondering if because it was so hot that it warped all this metal here, even though this is not straight, but. Okay, yeah, and that pad. All right, let me get this whole thing off and look at the pad. Uh, take a look at that. So I'm gonna have to do the air tire too, just because I'm, since I'm changing pads, so look at that. So you can tell this was pretty new because I just done these brake pads probably not even like a year ago, maybe? Not even long ago, but yeah, these were hard the one side, it's like brand new. So if you're not, these are actually like 1985 Cadillac rear calipers, and they have the, uh, disc brake, or not disc brake, but they have the uh, e-brake here, which that's super annoying. This is like one of the worst annoying calipers of all times. Like getting this thing set, um, you know, getting them aligned and set and just, uh, but it's always been an issue turning these, these things, they want to lock up, so they don't want to twist. So I got to take this thing completely apart and look up. I mean, there's, there was some reason why it locked up. So it's more, like I said, it's more complicated because you have the e-brake involved, but um, let me see if I can get this off here. Right, this thing is definitely overdue for a flush. But, all right, so I'm gonna throw this in some Dawn and water here. I don't wanna work on a dirty caliper, so I'm gonna let this soak it. 
I mean, the water's gonna get inside the cap, but I'm picking the whole thing apart. I soak all the parts in there. All right, I'm gonna try to clean up that um, road right there. And what I'm gonna do is, for kind of, well, I guess I've had these for a couple of years now. This is Sogami. I converted this to CNC. Uh, but this actually has a really large truck. Eight inch truck. Even though I might, I mean, I could maybe get it done because that's a 12 inch swing. I mean, 12 inches. I can go with that, but I do actually have a bigger four draw truck, but I'm just gonna take that one, use that right there. So I want to switch the sides around. That's actually a pretty nice, uh, I got the whole CN, well, I mean, I probably have over grand into it, the CNC conversion, but I'm not gonna do any CNC, I'm just gonna basically use my, uh, um, my dial, what's it called, the manual uh, pulse generator, and I'm gonna just run this in there. But I'm gonna flip these around so it will actually fit on the, those things. You know, originally I thought I would, um, maybe hit this on later, but I don't feel like I, can, I, can, I can't safely hold it. At least, you know, I'd like to get the back. I'm still thinking about it, but I might just get some sandpaper and spin it like that, let it run. Get some of those little, just the, the high ridges off. All right, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you, I mean if you look at a brake system, it's definitely not perfect. As long as you're getting good contact. So I have a couple of low spots you can see right there. So I'm just going to keep on going for a little bit longer. And I'm only going to be able to get them all out, but yeah, I have not to be able to cut this. I'm just, like I said, I'm worried about it popping out. Just because I want to get, I would like to get good pressure against this front plate, you know, the front side. So, um, I think I figured out the original where the problem is here. I don't know if you can see that. If you can see my finger. The axle's pulling out on that side. The side with the brake problem, see the axle? It's about an inch further out than the other one. So I just got done rebuilding that axle probably about a year ago. I think I made a video about it. Um, and this one, I, this is actually a grizzly axle. And I replaced this probably 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but it's pulling away. The, the bearing's pulling out. Um, not so like that from the factory. I don't think so. I should be pushed. It should be pressed all against that thing. Um, wow. And I, then I also think this bracket's bent. So I might have to put that on my press and bend that back. Yeah, just because there was so much heat and this thing was pulling out. So it's putting, that's what the pressure was. This axle's coming out, man. All right, so here is the real root cause of the problem here. So... Um, I'll pull the axle out here, see if I can get it out. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously it doesn't look like it happened recently. It probably has been budging away. Um, so let me pull this thing out. I'm probably going to have to have my hammer, slide hammer to get it out of there. You put a little WD-4 in there, loosen it up a little bit. I also jacked my carpet or anything like that, so hopefully the oil will stay in the, the pumpkin. All right, so here's a closer look at the issue. So... This actually is not a bad bearing too. It's a it's a Japanese bearing, so Noko or Noyo. Um, so I'm gonna like my other. I still actually have my original axle. So, um, but this one seems like it's. I mean, this the my other one had original had issues with the seal part, the seal surfacing, um, which I've already fixed. I kind of sanded it down, evened it out a little bit. Um, I mean, I guess like what I could do is. I guess see how good the surfaces are. I'm going to clean that off here, the grease area. And then, um, I mean, the bearing doesn't feel bad, but why did it come off? You know, it's not supposed to pull off like that. And what's sketchy is like the whole axle is being actually held in with this bearing, you know, this, this Preston bearing. Um, so basically the, the axle is coming out of the, out of the truck. So, um, yeah, this is supposed to be pressed on there and not come off. All right, so here's one. Here's the original axe I took off, like probably 15 years ago. See how the bearings pressed all the way against there? Uh, what happened to this axle originally is, like I said, I didn't have a bearing press to put this on, so I just basically bought the whole axle, but the bearing was going out. Um, all right, so I guess it. I mean, I don't know. It lasted 15 years, I guess. I don't know. Some pretty hard off-roading trips. So do I replace the bearing? The temp it feels a little tight, I guess. Maybe it's overheating in there, and that's what kind of Moved it. All right, I'm not gonna chance it. I'm not gonna get anywhere, I think. 
Alright, so it didn't find dark. So I gotta take my brain press over there and remove this thing or that or cut it off. Last time I had to cut, cut it off. But my final theory on what this whole thing happened is the bearing feels like it's dry, right? So it feels like it's not, the oil is probably just, you know, it's probably 15 years old, probably. I mean, I've had this Bronco for probably 25 years. But my theory is, is that since it got dry, it got hot. So the axle was cooler and the bearing was hotter, so the bearing race expanded and made it allowed to loosen it up a little bit. So... All right, so I ordered another Timken bearing, the same one I the last time. I, I just rebuilt the other axle um, not that long ago. That bearing was probably 40, 50 years old. That was the original one. I don't know how old it was, but it was... I had never replaced it, and it was on my truck, I said, truck for like 25 years. So I checked out this pretty good contraption. So it's one of the bearing... I forgot what they're called, but I have a couple pieces of sidebar. Because it won't fit in between here, so you need a way to... Kind of get behind the pulley. Let's see. Awesome. All right, so here's a closer look at my contraption. Oh, I'll bet that was pretty good. That's great aids. Actually, I have these for my for my puller. So then it goes up there. I if I get that off. Well, it came off, so. Um, I, mean, I got this at a Bronco house a long time ago. I know it's not a horrible bearing, it's a Japanese made bearing. I mean, I saw Japan somewhere in here. Japan, there you go. Koyo. Alright, cool. So, yeah, my, my, like I said, my theory was this thing just got dry and overheated. And once it overheated, it basically expanded at a different rate and slid off the axle. Alright, Jason and Jay. So, I have each caliper soaking in. And uh, Don and water, all the hardware components. I, I try to separate them per tire. Um, yeah, I didn't really. I mean, there was actually holes in, in the rubber seals. Yeah, I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Even though they're pretty old. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking 10, 15 years ago when I put that in there. I'm not sure. I'm thinking anywhere, more like 15, probably. Um, yeah, because that single master cylinder, like with the four wheel drum brake, was so sketchy. Especially when I had a supercharger on it. Um, all right, so let's get this soak in. Yeah, these were actually like, like at O'Reilly to 90 bucks. I think I said that already. And like 57 was the cheapest I could see them on Amazon, but the description wasn't good and I didn't really want to chance it. So I actually, I feel more comfortable with me rebuilding the thing um, than just buying some random one off Amazon. You know, I'm thinking my theory was correct about the heat. So... Originally, when you saw the bearing, it, it slipped over. It was like sitting, sitting like right, right here, right. So it looks like it's some heat and scoring. So not super bad. So I'm gonna grab some emery cloth and just kind of, you know, because I can feel some slight ridges here and here there. But so when I get the new bearing on, I don't want to actually have it uh, lock up the bearing. So I'm gonna get down the the ridges. But this that feels pretty good. It's pretty clean. So. All right, so if you're not familiar with emery cloth, so I'm just going to go back hand, manually, kind of go back and run these across it. Um, like I said, I wish I could, I guess I could, you need to find a way, if I could, it'd be cool if I could find a way to spin it. Yeah, my lathe, this just won't fit in my lathe. All right, so I cut the high spots off. The thing is, you want to minimal, you want to minimize the amount of material you take off because then you'll, you'll screw up the clearance. But at the same time, I don't want to score the new bearing when I bring it back in. <clears throat> Like it's going to cut and groove the inside of that bearing. Um, Alright, so looking pretty good, pretty smooth. So hopefully, the like I said, the clearance is still good here. You know, it's not going to push, the new one's not going to push off, but I, like I said, I feel like this thing overheated and that's what allowed it to um, walk off. Wow. <clears throat> I actually found my uh, original paint that I painted these calipers with probably forever, you know. I mean, this can is probably, is there a date on it? But this actually would tell me when I did my disc brakes. Um, 11.40. I'm guessing probably early 2000s, maybe. I'm not sure. Is that the 11th month? Like November of 2000? 
yeah, I don't think I, it's been that long, you know, if this is black paint, I wouldn't, I'd, I wouldn't paint a red or something like that, you know, it's not like some Brembo or something, yeah, it sort of bugs me when people paint their calipers red when they're not even actually like a high-performance caliper, they're trying to make it look like a high-performance caliper when it's not. All right, take a look how bent this thing is. Yeah, I mean, I could tell this by looking at it that it was bent right there. I mean, it was a combination of pushing on this thing and the heat. So, all right, so moving the strap press, I might even have to use some heat because, I mean, this thing was overheated. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it was like 400, just the rim was 400 degrees. So, yeah, I could definitely feel the brakes fading too. So the brake uh, fluid was boiling. I got my seal and the bearing came in. Yeah, it's actually, I made another video about this a while back, about, uh, Tim can moving things overseas, but this is made in Japan, so that's not that bad. I guess it's only 20 bucks. It's only even expensive, so. Um, okay, so, but yes, this is, it says Koyo. Doesn't say Tim. Kim, doesn't say Tim. So this is exactly like the other one. This one also says Koyo, Japan. But I don't see Timken anywhere. So is this a fake bearing or something? It feels very tight, but I mean, this I got this on Amazon, so I don't know if this is a bootleg um, bootleg bearing or something. Because all of the other, other Tim can I see, it seems like that that foil wrapper. So maybe we'll Google that. But that's interesting. This is the exact same bearing that came off this, and I put this on 15 years ago. So hmm. I'm going to press. Normally I might lube this up right here, but I don't want this to walk off again. Bind it up. There it goes. I'm going to push harder. Get more leverage. Pretty looking good. You know, I bought that bearing press probably 10 years ago. And surprisingly, you know, with all these like CNC machines and motors and all this different thing I'm working on, that has bearings on, I actually use this thing probably, I would say at least 10 times a year probably. Just pulling things, different things off, you know, and bending parts back. And it's like when I first bought this, I thought I'd hardly ever use it, but I use it a lot more than I think I thought I ever would. Okay, rebuild kits came in. Got the calipers painted, all dry. It's in there for about a day or so. Um, I think two days drying, so the should be pretty solid. Yeah, I put the paper in here to put the old seal on just so I wouldn't get paint on the inside. That should just come right off the seal. Right. Put a bunch of paper in here, so I'm gonna wipe it down with alcohol again, and then um, I want to make sure I didn't get any paint on the inside with the, the ceiling surface. So I'm going to wipe this down with alcohol. Okay, so and I'm just going to the piston too. It's interesting is that this black material is almost like it's a, um, like an oxidized layer, like a protectant, you know, like a, like a chemically treated surface to prevent rusting. So I'm going to hit that with my buffer just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Because this, this is the area where the seal, it's up here, rides against this part here. So I want to make sure that's nice and no high spots, nothing that's going to actually grab the seal. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take it over my buffer. I'm just going to go through it real fast and lightly hit with the surface. All right, so here's a good example. I, I got to take this one and buff it some more. But I can feel, uh, I can feel the surface on the little scratches. I can feel the scratch marks. So I had to go back and buff this some more because I, I got to get all, I don't want anything to grab, all, grab the seal. <clears throat> like it's going to grab that seal and cut the seal. It's not perfect, but the main thing is you want to get those sharp edges off. Anything that can actually grab that seal. So you can still see some lines, but all the sharp edges are knocked off. I mean, it was sealing before, so I wasn't even leaking before with those scratches. So, all right, cool. Alright, so here's my seal kit. It has everything I need. Um, this thing just goes in there. Slide that one in there. Um, obviously, this is the dust seal. It goes here. That's the 
seal that goes in the front of that. Um, and this is actually the shaft that goes through the back. That's the seal, outer seal. So it goes like that. And then that seal, and this goes on the inside. And that's the actual in inlet here. All right, so this is probably the most complicated uh, disc brake caliper I've ever messed with, just because it actually has an e-brake. Whereas a lot of modern ones are a combination of a drum brake for the e-brake and then the caliper, like the rear braking systems. But yeah, this has always been kind of a headache to figure out. So what's funny is I figure it out, and then the next time I have to do it again, which is probably four or five years, you know, three, five, I don't know, years later, um, I had to like kind of learn it all over again. So, so before I leave this right. up, I'm gonna, uh, we're try to install it and put some silicone grease on it. Just a little bit. You don't want to put a dry. You don't want to rub dry metal on a dry seal. You'll t you're t tear the seal up. Sorry, I get it. There's, there's a little seal right here. This one seal goes there. So this is the e-brake part that goes in when it pushes in. Um, and that actually what's push it pushes the caliper against. So um, all right, I'm actually going to have to clean that off of my, my wire wheel too to get some of that debris that's in there. All right, all right. Because this thing is spring loaded, um, you have to hold the spring back. So you need to put something in there. Once you push it back in your other hand, it's spring loaded. So you need to be able to keep it back in there. And it just goes like this. And the seal will hold this down. So what's funny? This seal looks different than the other one, but I mean, obviously, just knowing the logic of it, you want the flat surface down. All right, and then the plate goes on top of that, and then and the nut. All right, got it back together. Um, if you're not familiar with this sort of brake system, it's really, I don't know, it's sort of confusing. But this, so the piston comes out on its own under under hydraulic pressure, right? But when you hit the e-brake, this lever pulls forward. There's a spring here, and then you go like that. That's what hits the e-brake. That's what activates the brake. Yeah, I didn't really like this design. Um, but when I got that, I got the whole four disc kit a long time ago. And this is what they came with. So they actually, originally when I bought the kit, it said, do you want e-brake or without e-brake? Obviously, I was going down mountain roads, you know, down Big Bear. So definitely wanted an e-brake. So, all right, let's go put the bleeder screw in, just the rest of the stuff. And this one's done. I'm going to go back and do the other one. All right, guys, it's all back together. Um, so these are probably some of the most annoying brake calipers ever. I've been messing with this for a long time, so let's get them adjusted. But all right, so able to fix the rotor here. Um, I'm actually kind of lucked out. I only did um, about eight dollars worth of damage. I mean, if you have your own tools, I mean, it was eighty bucks. Um, so the bearing was about twenty bucks. The the, the main rear bearing here was, was 20, twenty bucks. Um, seal was about eight bucks. So 30, about 30 for the pads. Um, so 60 plus the rebuild kit. So maybe like 80, 90 into this maybe, but tax, I guess. You know, the rebuild kit for the calipers, which probably didn't even need it. Um, because I wouldn't even leak it anyway. So um, just because it overheated so much, I just wanted to double check everything. Um, all right, cool. That was, I've never actually seen the, well, that's the first time I ever had the axle, an axle walk out because of a bare, bad bearing. Usually I just hear a bunch of noise. And typically on this car, in the past, when the bearing went out, it would actually, it would start leaking oil from the, from the, from the seal here because the bearing would no longer be center. It would, it, it would come down and it would leak oil out. But in this case, man, it was walking out. And I, I really think that this, this caliper thing was keeping the, the wheel on from coming all the way out. Yeah, you know I mean, this was keeping the thing from fall, coming all the way out, this bracket. So, all right, so if I ever hear that noise again, that, that grinding noise, I'll kind of know, but I'm gonna keep an eye on the, the walkout. So, um, hopefully this video helps somebody. All right, cool.